Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 1. This is a recap by an artist, and there will be spoilers. Let's get started. By now, if you've been watching these recaps with me, you know how this program works. So the first model up is actor David Tennant, who I think is best known as being Doctor Who, but he's terrific in really any role he does. Now, four hours later, three artists turn their easels around and David gets to see them for the first time, and he's gonna select one of these to go home. This has nothing to do with the final judging, but it's a really exciting moment, and his reaction was delight. So here's the first one. I, I, I think it resembles him a little bit. <laughs> that's the key, a little bit. Um, and maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough if it's a good enough painting. Let's look at it f if we were to stand back a little bit and see if we can maybe think of some other thoughts. Well, now it looks less like him. <laughs> so that didn't work. If this has been my painting, I would have stopped at one point realizing I, I had lost the, the, um, the likeness. This is the second one, definitely a likeness to him. I think she absolutely nailed it. I think she did a good job of um, using neutrals within the face and then to make it an exciting portrait to put that vibrant red behind him. Just imagine or hold your hand up for a second and look at what it like, looks like without the, the red and um, it kind of doesn't work. Did I say orange before? I meant red. Okay, the next and third one is not a painting. It's a, oh yeah, it is a painting. Is it a painting? Yes, yes, it's a painting. Whew, sure looks like a, a drawing in charcoal somehow. I don't feel like this resembles him at all. I feel like it has certain features of his, but I don't feel like it resembles him. But we're gonna stand back and see if we get a longer view of it, if things change. It really does, oh, it change somewhat, you know? Looks more like him when you pull away from it. Uh, okay, he's got a likeness, but it looks like an underpainting, not a finished painting. Now, he's going to pick one to take home with him. I was not surprised at all by the one he picked. I would have picked the same one, and quite frankly, I think she's going to win the episode. And I thought so the minute I saw her, uh, her piece here. There it is. So that's going home with him. It's a lovely piece. Not, not terribly big, but really, really sensitively and thoughtfully done. So good job on that one. All right, our next model is Michaela Cole. She is a writer, actor, producer, and is known for a series in uh, Britain called Chewing Gum, which I'm not familiar with. But look at that fantastic face. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Now, it's, it's always hard to do a face that is completely smooth like this. You know, younger people. <laughs> uh, I find more challenging than, than uh, people who have maybe some other shapes on their face. But it also means that you can simplify the form somewhat too. So there's some disadvantages and some advantages. So here it is four hours later, three artists turn their easels around and she's going to pick one of them. So let's see, this is her first chance to look at them. The first one that they revealed, I thought was a really strong candidate. I mean, I feel like this person absolutely nailed it. I don't know how this looks like four hours of work. This looks to me like maybe carefully studied 25 to 30 minutes. So I don't know why more of her wasn't done or it or it's so unfinished. Uh, it's just a mystery to me. I don't know what you do with four hours, but it doesn't look like it was used here. Now this one, this one we're going to talk about more than a few times. Um, I don't know why my slide kind of cut the head off there. Well, I think we're going to get a better view of it later. Um, but it's, it doesn't look like her at all. I think the person got a good job of the, getting the sitter. I mean, to get the uh, position the sitter was in and was ambitious in terms of getting the whole figure in. But uh, it, I saw no resemblance, and I think that's important. It's Portrait Artist of the Year. The next one has somewhat of a resemblance to her, but not as much as the first one did, and only looks similar to her for me. Uh, not that I could have done better, but but I'm kind of I'm always kind of surprised when something is kind of close but not quite there, and I didn't feel like this one got where it needed to go. So now we're going to pull back. Yeah, I wanted to pull back and look at that one that we looked at, which cut off her head. I love that the boots are nice and big, 
Isn't that kind of fun? You know, that forced perspective. But it, it, it doesn't look like her. And I find that a sticking point. So let's see which one she's going to pick. And, oh boy, was I surprised. I thought she was going to pick that first one, which was looked like it had a strong resemblance to her, even though it was um, somewhat unfinished, and I wondered why it took so much time. But, but this is the one she chose. I don't get it. I don't get it. And we're going to talk about this later, because somebody needs to explain this to me. <laughs> um, if I had been a judge, this is not one that I would have taken home and not one I would have picked to go forward. All right, the next model is James Morrison. Again, he must be an actor, but I'm not familiar with him. And he was just delighted when the canvases got turned around. It was really fun to see him. As the Brits say, he was gobsmacked. So here the easels are being turned around, three easels after four hours, and he's going to pick one. And, uh, and Let's see what he does. Now, his reaction was absolutely delightful. He was so super excited, and, and that's what I like about the program. You know, it's a feel-good kind of program. Look at that. Wow. You know, just pure joy and happiness right there on his face. So now let's look at the three pa paintings. The first one is a very small painting, and um, I don't... I guess I see a resemblance, but boy, that's a weak, weak painting. Oh, it's anemic. It needs some, needs some oomph for sure. This one I really liked. There's something about it that kind of reminds me of um, some of the art that was done in the 1950s. <laughs> yeah, like 50s through into the 60s. All right, this last one I really feel like does resemble him, and I've. it's a very interesting color palette, isn't it? People seldom use turquoise because it seldom shows up. You know, look outside. Um, turquoise, turquoise is not a color you usually see. I guess if you live in the Caribbean, maybe you do, but um, it's it's a rarity. So I thought that was very interesting and quite bold. And I thought she did um, uh, a really good job. And I do think there's a likeness. So if I was him, this is the one I would have picked to go home. Now we're going to stand back a little bit because we found that when we look at it close up, it looks a little different than it does when we pull back. Oh boy. Suddenly it got way weaker, didn't it? Oh darn. I wonder why. Yeah, that's something that happens with my painting because if you're real close to it, you think, oh, I'm completely there. Good job. And then you walk away and you look back and you go, uh oh, I haven't finished what I need to do. So that's my first reaction to that one, but I still would have picked it. All right, so let's see which one James picks. And boy, was this a surprise to me. This is the last one I would have picked, but uh, he was thrilled with it. So this is the one he picks. Look how small it is. And he was sort of excited about the fact that she left what I call the DNA of the painting, you know, those, those dabs that she used. I, I I put them on a separate piece of paper, but it's it's kind of fun to see the process. And I think cropped enough, cropped and matted, this could be a really nice painting. But but uh, it's certainly not the strongest of the paintings that we saw today. So the next thing that happens is they go into the final judging. All right, the final judging. This is when all the artists are considered and judged by the experts. And by experts, we're not talking, one of them is a painter, the other one is a historian, and one is a curator of art or an art seller. So there are the participants, and it's so exciting. You, know, you really don't know who's going to win, really. I mean, in this program, you really don't know who's going to win. All right, here's the first one. I agree with this. It's a very competent painting. It gets a little milky and pastel-y for me, if you know what I mean. A lot of white was used to to make those pale colors. And I kind of enjoy painters who will make a value change. I mean, this, there are value changes here, but, but something about it stays quite chalky, which is just not my preference. This is the one that I think is going to win the program for the day because it's, uh, it's impeccable. It's beautifully done. It's confident. And boy, does it ever look like him. So I do think this is the one that's going to win, but we will see. I am constantly surprised in this program by by who wins. Um, not not at the very end, I have to say. I haven't been displeased with who. Well, that's not true. Landscape Artist of the Year, I have some pretty big quibbles with that one. This is the third one that got picked, and I don't get it. Uh, I would have picked that 
uh, painting, uh, the really strong one of Michaela, that first one, because with very few strokes, uh, the person got a likeness down nicely. And this was just uh, kind of muddy and all over the place for me, and also did not have uh, enough of a likeness. But that's me. So the winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Well, this pleased me, because this is the person I would have picked as the winner. The winner is the uh, red painting. And you can see it's quite small, but she did a beautiful job. So I'm really happy to see her win. So this is episode one of um, Portrait Artist of the Year, season four. Remember, there are seven, seven? Yeah, six or seven, I can't remember. I think it's six, six different episodes. So each, there's always one per person picked from each episode who goes forward into the semi-finals. So there should be six people as we get near the end of the program. And then they narrow it down to three and then finally down to one. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.